Hello, everyone. Welcome to this fireside chat uh, edition at WRI. Uh, today, we have with us uh, Kranti Sambhav. Uh, Kranti is the editor and lead at Times Drive and Gadget Times at Times Network Digital. Uh, many of us have been following Kranti for a very long time, ever since his Raftar uh, days at NDTV. And he's one of the uh, journalists who has been very actively involved in the automotive sector in India for almost two decades now. And so today what we'll be talking to him is this whole conversation which is happening around, which is moving from ICE to EV, which is from internal combustion engine to electric mobility. And so before we start, uh, I'd like to formally welcome Kranti. Kranti, thanks a lot for joining and taking your time. And, and, and participating in this file chat. Thank you so much, Amit. Thank you so much. I'm a bit nervous because we are, as you know, we are mostly asking questions, not answering them, but. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Okay, so let me start. Uh, so uh, you have been following this sector for over two decades now. So if I have to start uh, by asking, what are the couple of big disruptions that we have seen in this sector for last couple of decades? Uh, and I'll come to this, uh, uh, why I'm asking this question, but if you'd highlight some few disruptions, some few massive changes that we have seen in automotive sector uh, in last couple of decades. So uh, last uh, two decades, what I've seen, Amit, uh, uh, that, you know, uh, most of the time that image is still there. That, you know, Paisa Vasool or Khatamini uh, Honda ya Kitna Deti had that mindset was there throughout. Uh, that was the initial phase when most of the customers were looking at, uh, you know, value for money products only. Uh, what I've seen in last, uh, you know, 18 to 20 years that uh, that that has changed a bit. Uh, we are very, we are still very value centric customers, but at the same time, we it is not only value for money. We are we have started the customers have graduated into you know the feature rich kind of products. So a uh, you know a, a one of the biggest uh, aspect which has changed is the kind of features which uh, most of the cars have started uh, offering. Second thing which uh, change, I guess, after features would be, I, I can say, is technology. We connected cars and uh, all the, I mean, right now, chip shortage is also a part, uh, partly because of uh, the whole delivery and waiting period is also because of the heavy reliance on uh, chips and, uh, you know, more technological uh, advancements in the cars. Uh, and third thing, which was uh, big, uh, as far as I can say, which I've seen in maybe last two to three years, also because of marketing efforts, is safety. Uh, the way the way Indian customers have uh, started talking about uh, you know crash test rating uh, recently, I met one uh, guy at the airport and uh, he recognized me. And first thing he asked me that uh, why uh, all why not all the car companies are giving uh, you know five star rating cars. So that was that is the kind of uh, mentality we are seeing right now. Even uh, in the value segment, uh, you know affordable car segment, customers are looking at uh, safety. And uh, right now, uh, obviously, the biggest uh, uh, you know, biggest change, I would say, in, in mindset is about the EVs. Now, Indian customers have started, uh, not only customers, even the manufacturers, they are kind of surprised if I talk about Tata Motors. So the adoption or the receptivity for uh, uh, EVs is something which I guess is one of the biggest. Uh, uh, we are going through that phase when uh, customers are looking at uh, EVs in a much more uh, you know, a favorable manner. Interesting, interesting. So, as you said, uh, that recently the conversation of EV is uh, starting to happen. So, when you look at this conversation, is it mostly from the consumer or prospective customer side, or it's more from people who are into the environmental side and who have been talking about EV? How real is this conversation around EVs? So the conversation uh, has two aspects, Amit. I guess uh, last time whenever we had, uh, we were in the uh, uh, same meeting, I had uh, pointed, pointed this out that, you know, the, the conversation is happening at, I think, three levels right now, uh, not two, uh, three levels. One is obviously the awareness because of WhatsApp, because of social media, because of YouTube, the customer is aware. Whatever is happening globally, we are aware. Uh, uh, most of the companies have announced their EV uh, timelines, deadlines, when they will stop producing, uh, you know, petrol cars, diesel cars, Indian customers know. A. Uh, second thing which Indian customers are looking at uh, is a value. Uh, for them, it is a commute. Uh, they are not, they are not like, uh, they're not worried about, or maybe they're not aware, or they're not so concerned about the environment. Uh, so they are only looking at 
commute and what makes better sense uh, budget wise or economically and third is i would say uh, the the activists and the uh, change makers or the or, or uh, influencers who are talking about electric uh, vehicles and i think these three conversations are uh, happening uh, or three uh, discourses are kind of parallel and i guess in 2 to 3 years uh, we will see uh, combined outcome of uh, all these three discussions but i would say the discussion is real uh, customers are looking at uh, few products in a very serious manner as i mentioned nexon or, or and tigo uh, the, the the response which chada motors is getting uh, they even they are kind of uh, impressed or surprised and uh, in one or two years we might see lots of new uh, electric vehicles i'm talking about passenger cars but the two wheelers uh, we have already uh, many electric products so i think the conversation is real uh, but it is happening in three different streams this is what i think. so when you mention the conversation in three different stream so one we can definitely understand the rationale behind the climate and the air pollution linkage to the electric vehicle conversation what is it driving the customers to look do you think it's the same conversation which is forcing customers or customers are driven to ev for something totally different uh you know uh, if we talk about the number or the portion of customers driven by the environmental concern is very low very small i think uh, we uh, uh, most of most of us in metros i guess we are discussing or i'm not uh, saying that uh, you know uh, tier 2 tier 3 city customers are not uh, so environment conscious but point is that this is the discussion which we are seeing but majority of customers who are looking at electric vehicles that whole decision is also guided by the simple arithmetic of maintenance the charging the you know cost per kilometer so these kind of con- uh, conversation and calculations is uh, they are actually in favor of electric vehicles and that is the reason why customers most of the commuters most of the customers they are going for electric uh, whoever is thinking or talking about electric vehicles biggest chunk of uh, customers i think is also because they they uh, have started understanding the mathematics behind it they have started calculating uh, how many kil- kilometers are we driving every day what is the actual kilometer uh, what is the actual commute what is our you know notional commute and uh, how much am i spending so right now just that we don't have so much so many options otherwise uh, customers most of the customers are you know driven by the uh, simple arithmetic of uh, maintenance and uh, value when initially you mentioned the psyche of a typical indian customer and you mentioned kitna deti hai is that the same which is now getting converted in favor of ev which is now uh, pushing them to ask these questions definitely because if you uh, you know i don't have any empirical uh, data on this but i have also seen after uh, first lockdown and then second lockdown so many customers have understood that you know uh, that's why i use the word notional uh, range or notional commute because most of us think that we drive uh, these many kilometers but in reality we don't uh, post lockdown one lockdown two i think many of us they we started uh, calculating uh, in reality how how many kilometers are we you know covering in a week so that uh, understanding has uh, helped them uh, to gauge uh, what kind of range they need what kind of uh, you know uh, should they really be worried about the range or that range anxiety when should it hit you because uh, we have seen the growth in uh, electric two wheelers and uh, i guess a uh, because last uh, my connectivity one you know one of the biggest factor that's why they are growing and also in two wheelers we are also seeing that you know the, the charging infrastructure or mechanism is still uh, kind of flexible so some of the products you can actually take out the batteries and uh, charge at home so that flexibility has helped the two wheeler uh, industry a lot but in in the case of passenger cars i think uh, we have just started understanding or we are started looking at our behavior driving pattern and, and now we have we realized that okay range anxiety is obviously one reality but at the same time we are not driving so much every day so there could be a middle path and that is the reason uh, so many customers are actually thinking uh, which is based on again uh, value value uh, part of the whole uh, conversation interesting so one more follow up on this uh, and again based on your discussion and 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 kind of understanding of the sector how much of this shift or potential shift could be attributed to the the, the steep increase in oil prices we have seen and now i mean we have seen that prices have been uh, curtailed and they have gone down uh, recently delhi uh, the prices went down by petrol prices were down almost by 8 rupees a liter 
but how much of this rise in fuel cost has attributed to this shift towards ev i guess uh, you know we what we have understood uh, as a customer whatever conversation i've had uh, with customers they they have understood that you know the prices will keep on uh, rising uh, if we talk about petrol diesel but uh, is it going to affect our immediate decision i'm not too sure because we generally take like 3 to 4 months in deciding which car or which product to buy uh in that time frame we are also looking at obviously uh, the fuel prices but at the same time we are also looking at two uh, other aspects which we have seen one is you know a uh, very very decisive kind of idea or opinion about diesel cars so many customers are not going for uh, diesel car they were they're pretty sure that okay we never we never know what kind of you know directive or what kind of order might come so let's avoid diesel other than uh, sps and so uh one of the one of the reasons like market leader uh, maruti has uh, you know stopped uh, producing small diesel engines and third thing which they are also looking at uh, i guess is that uh, because of people like uh, you me and uh, international uh, media exposure they also know that you know future is petrol uh, sorry future is electric so they have to they have to think of you know uh, petrol or diesel alternative so in that sense i guess fuel prices plus looking at uh, you know uh, the timeline or the time frame where uh, they are uh, looking at, i mean they they want to own the car for 3 to 5 years whatever and uh, the diesel uh, i mean the regular i mean general idea about uh, you know i engines so i think these three aspects are kind of driving this whole uh, you know, thought or idea towards uh, electric vehicles Thanks a lot. So this is very interesting. Uh, so on this point, uh, so we have seen uh, that a lot of states have come up with EV policy, and Delhi being one which has slightly uh, uh, a very productive EV policy. We also seen that uh, the fame scheme, the one and two, has also kind of catalyzed. Uh, so a lot of state governments and center government is nudging towards EV. So what is it that these governments can do more to be slightly more decisive that the future is ev because right now it's the nudge right how can we slightly more so how can you convert this nudge into push so that uh, the acceleration happens fast in this scenario amit i mean uh, what we have discussed uh, i think in the past also we need a holistic uh, national level blueprint because uh, you know i'll i'll give you my example i'm i'm, I'm pretty confused while answering uh, my viewers questions in case they ask uh, which electric vehicle they should i mean go for and uh, i need to ask them like you know uh, you need to look at your state's subsidy and your state's ev policy and stuff. i mean I, I, for me it is not very uh, uh, clear cut and uh, i'm sure this is uh, the same scenario with uh, customers also i think i'm not sure how it, uh, it it can because i think you you would also mention that this is uh, niti ayog is working on some kind of uh, uh, you know blueprint where everyone is on the same page everyone is on uh, everyone is you know uh, under uh, uh, you know similar kind of uh, program i think a we need national level uh, uniform program as far as green policy is concerned and at the same time we also need uh, all the state governments because uh, as we discuss uh, you know as i mentioned uh, in metros or or, or uh, big cities we are discussing about electric vehicles and many states they are not so sincere they are not so serious about the uh, electric electrification of uh, or of mobility and that is the reason uh, i think if we are planning in 2 to 3 years we are the, we uh, the number of cars uh, passenger cars or electric vehicles the, the number of uh, launches we are expecting or anticipating i think the state governments they they need to start uh, putting up the charges and they need to formulate uh, the uh, charging network uh, whatever mechanism they have to because uh, you know some of the some of us they we live in skyscrapers i mean multi stories uh, but most of us uh, most of indians are not uh, you know living in multi stories for them uh, charging mechanism won't be so uh, so difficult and i it is i mean it will happen only if we start doing uh, we start acting right now so again national policy i think everyone on the same page and uh, state governments uh, they they need to uh, be more sincere and uh, cohesive as far as ev framework and policies and concern, concern otherwise uh, if you talk with customers they are aware they know they have whatsapp forwards they have youtube videos they have calculated everything so they are uh, they understand 
what uh, EV means, uh, you know, to the budget and the environment. So I think that part is taken care of. Only thing what we need to do or, or the governments we uh, need to do is uh, provide charging infrastructure. Problem. Interesting. Uh, so one is definitely that you need a cohesive policy, but this, this, this point that you mentioned that creating charging infrastructure can also be seen as a statement of intent. If the state government, city government starts creating charging infrastructure, then people at large will know that, they, that there is a seriousness of EV and the shift can also happen. Interesting. Uh, so you've been also interacting a lot with OEMs, uh, component manufacturers. What's their perspective? And are they also looking at future EV? And if so, a lot of current equipment manufacturers will have to either realign or you have to change their uh, uh, work to survive in this future. So is, is there a seriousness from that part that the future is EV or not? Yeah, there is. There is. Uh, you know, everyone is talking about it. I mean, again, uh, maybe four or five years back, there was kind of confusion whether we will, or maybe, yeah, maybe, uh, you know, all these uh, auto expos or motor shows we used to go, whether it was uh, Frankfurt or Tokyo, everyone used to discuss whether the, the future will be uh, electric or uh, hydrogen fuel cell vehicles or hybrids. Uh, we, we still keep hearing those arguments, but more or less everyone knows that in two to three years, the ecosystem which we are looking at will be, uh, you know, kind of favoring uh, electric vehicles. So that most of the manufacturers know. Only thing, uh, only thing they differ as far as opinion is concerned is when. So, uh, for example, we recently heard, I mean, uh, you must have heard that, uh, you know, that headline when Rajiv uh, Bajaj at the launch, uh, Pulsar launch, he, he mentioned that, you know, he, it is bets against uh, oats, I oats, guess. Yes. Uh, you know, Bajaj, uh, Aishar, and Enfield, Aishar, uh, TVS, etc. So, basically, traditional and legacy manufacturers versus the startups. So, you know, they are, they are also uh, in... In you know, in agreement with the fact that they have to get into electric vehicles, only you know, biggest hurdle or biggest uh, barrier I'm seeing in their uh, scenario, in their case, is that they are traditional manufacturers, so they are looked at in a different manner. So if we if we buy products from traditional manufacturers or we buy from uh, some fly-by-night operators, we will be you know the, that word of mouth. In case the traditional manufacturer, they don't provide you, uh, you know. Uh, affordable uh, and uh, reliable product uh, after sales service and you know maintenance if there is some kind of gap that bad publicity word of mouth they want to open a b there is a lot of dependency on uh, you know imported parts again on on china i guess so that is that all you know increases the cost or or, or keeps uh, keeps these product in that range where you don't find them traditionally affordable the kind of products you see so, uh, a, uh, you know, that traditional mindset and uh, after sales service, that legacy is there, which they have to save, that brand name they have to save. Uh, at the same time, there's few manufacturers, they, they, I think they're, they're, they're too cautious. Uh, uh, again, uh, we recently saw Marthi's chairman, uh, Mr. Asi Bhargav, he mentioned that, uh, you know, 1,000 or, or whatever, 2,000 EVs, they don't excite uh, uh, Maruti. So they said, I mean, uh, as a market leader, when when, when I, I mentioned how they stopped producing the small diesel engine and how the diesel market has gone down. So similarly, when the market leader is not too kicked about the electric vehicle right now, so the whole market somehow is not too, uh, it doesn't look that excited. But uh, they all know that uh, this is important. They all uh, are in the process of making. I mean, Bajaj obviously has produced, uh, even they has announced Tata is already there. Yeah, even Maruti for that matter, they have uh, uh, tie up with, Suzuki has international tie up with uh, Toyota. So they are produced, they're waiting for that product to come to India. But uh, uh, only difference in opinion or difference in uh, idea is about when will it happen. But everyone is in agreement that, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, future is electric. Only thing is that uh, some of them are more excited than others, more prepared than others. So this is interesting because uh, to see that the market leader, whether it is the car or the two-wheeler segment, are still not that gung-ho about electric. And one is that uh, they are not sure about the future. Uh, the second could be probably they are developing that product which would probably justify the brand name and all. So do you think that what happened with Tesla 
in North America, at least in the car industries. The same would also happen in India to kickstart this revolution, or do you think that the incumbent market leaders are have learned the lesson and they are they will come sooner than later on this electric uh, journey? Uh, I mean, I think in this case, I also feel that the uh, you know the legacy and the wisdom which they have uh, you know uh, attained uh, during last whatever two 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 and a half decades. I think that will help traditional manufacturers. As well. Only only thing is how uh, how fast and how agile they are to adapt to this. Because uh, recently, uh, uh, the, the the whole conversation around bets versus oats was also based upon few questions from Rajiv Pitaj, where he's asked for many many of the industry uh, experts. They are asking how will Ola. Uh, deliver the bikes. How will they? Uh, the, in case of accident, what will happen? How are they providing after sales? So these are the questions which customers ask, and these are the questions which the traditional manufacturers have already answered. So in that scenario, they have the uh, they they have the knowledge, they have the wisdom. Uh, only thing uh, which might be the you know the tipping point would be intent. But at the same time, I also feel Indian customers are very brutal, very uh, value centric. And they will not only uh, go just because everyone is uh, is going for you know certain product. So uh, in te- Tesla, for that matter, is like uh, hype product. Uh, 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 in Indian scenario, maybe I would say overhyped. But uh, I also feel that those kind of product, Indian Indian manufacturer or traditional manufacturers, they will find a way to provide those affordable electric vehicles in near future. This is what I'm, I'm hoping. And uh, we might not need. Uh, you know, Tesla kind of model to, to disrupt this uh, ICE uh, dominance. Okay, okay. No, then that, that's very interesting to hear because, uh, I mean, you know it more than me that uh, cars exceeding 10 lakh is less than 2% of our annual uh, vehicles sold. So we need something different from a Tesla-like equivalent to change the market. So the other question which uh, we don't generally discuss is the vehicle production is one and ownership is another. But what about the other ecosystem like maintenance and uh, and driver training for commercial vehicle and maintenance of vehicle? Do you think that also needs to happen so that there is a trust and uh, with the customer that in case, what happens if let's say my vehicle goes wrong or something goes wrong with the vehicle? Where do I take it? Where's the garage? I mean, so, is that also something which is crucial for upscaling of EV journey? I mean, in that that case, obviously, it is uh, easier uh, to maintain because obviously the number of parts, the number of moving parts and uh, electric vehicles are uh, far less, so the maintenance is easier. But uh, a general maintenance wisdom will take time to come when we have some issue. We will for for uh, petrol diesel vehicles, we more or less understand. Okay, this is the problem. This might be the issue, and we have to go to that. For EVs, I think it will take some time. I'm not too sure. For, for commercial vehicles and, and uh, drivers, uh, I think we might need some uh, courses or some kind of training. But uh, I think it will it'll be more, uh, I feel it will be more organic when we start, uh, you know, using it. I think uh, in, in this case, maybe, uh, I'm, maybe uh, I'm exaggerating, but I also feel that, you know, maintain, maintaining all the electric two-wheelers, two-wheelers has also taught us I taught Indian customers a lot about the EVs, how they will uh, run, how they, you know, what kind of shortcomings they have, uh, what challenges do we face, uh, charging infrastructure and also. So I think uh, in that scenario, I think it will be more organic, maybe for commercial vehicles or because that is the area we are focusing. I think they might need some kind of training. But uh, for customers, common customers, I think it will be more organic. They will start you know, uh, learn on, uh, on the go. Okay, oh, no, interesting. So on the two-wheeler segment uh, that you mentioned, uh, so one of the questions which I personally keep on getting is why are not the big three in the two-wheeler manufacturing not coming up with a very robust EV product? Uh, so one is that any insight and do you think that is going to change in, in short term? Yeah, it is It is going to change, I guess, because most of the bigger, you know, you know uh, Hero, TVS, they have all, the, all invested in electric vehicle uh, you know, manufacturers or startups. So, I mean, they have huge investment there. So they are a. They have the intention. They have. Uh, they are very serious about it. Uh, 
Uh, at the same time, they they have their own individual or, or standalone product. I mean, recently we saw the 10 years of Hero Moto Corp uh, event. Uh, I think there was one, uh, we did one story on the EV uh, scooter, I guess, from Hero Moto Corp. So they are on, on the way of launching that, I guess. Uh, TBS already has uh, iCube and uh, Bajaj uh, Chetak is uh, EV only. Uh, I, you know, in, in this in this scenario, again, two-wheeler manufacturing is kind of you know, a bit different uh, uh, from the car manufacturer because for two-wheelers, we still have that price, you know, uh, notional price or ideal mental price uh, for any product. So that was the challenge I was mentioning. Well, uh, you know, pricing for Chetak or iCube or any other, uh, you know, product from traditional manufacturer, they are priced a bit higher. So that becomes a big challenge for them to justify. So for traditional manufacturers, I think, uh, because they don't want to, uh, I mean, in two-wheelers, two-wheeler, uh, EV, electric two-wheelers, you remember last, you know, maybe five, seven years ago, there's so many fly-by-night operators and they, they, they just destroyed the whole trust factor in two-wheelers, uh, electric two-wheelers. And that is the reason why these manufacturers are extra cautious in so that uh, they don't get uh, you know, bad publicity and bad uh, rep. Uh, so and, and plus, uh, to get all those equipments, uh, it, it is kind of expensive. So they are working on it. They have a few products, but they are not. Uh, so, but mentally, we compare those products with uh, the traditional petrol uh, motorcycles or scooters, and that is the reason why not many customers are going for them. But they, uh, I feel that uh, they are more serious about uh, electric electrification than the car manufacturers. Okay. Okay. No, that, that that's. That's very interesting. So you mentioned about this typical notional value of two-wheeler. If you could give me in absolute terms, what would be that notional value? 50,000, 60,000, what would be? Yeah, that's what, that's the segment where, where customers are looking at. I mean, again, uh, from last few years, we have seen a certain lifestyle uh, motorcycling segment or lifestyle two-wheeler segment, which is emerging, but at the same time, most of the car commuters are uh, most of the customers are commuters, so they are looking at 50,000, 60,000 uh, uh, rupees product, and which will give them whatever 70 kmpl, 80 kmpl, and that is the whole uh, point. And the moment you make it electric, or it goes uh, you know, above one lakh, uh, they are not too uh, you know, excited about it. Okay, okay. The other question which I've been personally looking at for the last couple of years is this whole. Uh, push around electric bicycle eh? because that it's, it's a sweet spot between a bicycle and a two-wheeler. And while we have seen a lot of conversation, but it has really not have, we have not seen very tangible kind of products or take up. Mm -hmm. Any experience on this, why this electric cycle uh, has not picked up in India? So I think uh, it is, I, I mean, uh, what I can, uh, understand is the scenario is almost similar to, I mean, two examples I can give. One was Nano. Uh, when Nano came, everyone expected, or at least Tata Motors expected, that, you know, the customers from uh, two-wheelers or you know, three-wheelers, uh, they will, you know, uh, graduate to Nano. But somehow the customers, they, they didn't look at it as that. And the, the product which was sold was not uh, it was, you know, all the big malls, big uh, and the booking started at all these premium places and the customers somehow didn't connect. With it. So it some, you know, it, it fell between two different segments, which is contradictory. In case of electric cycles, I think the challenges are still there. What common cyclists are facing. So, for example, me, I, you know, I, I want to, you know, you are a bike enthusiast, you also bike a lot. Uh, even I want to, I have one, but I always, uh, I'm, I'm always uh, kind of scared that the kind of traffic we see. So that challenge is there. Uh, plus, uh, most of the uh, you know electric bikes are not so inexpensive like the common cycles. So it has kind of fallen in that segment where it is still not safe, but at the same time it is expensive, like um, you know, a bit expensive than uh, the common uh, cycle. So I, I, for me, I mean, maybe I'm incorrect, but that is my reading, where this has fell, you know, this has fallen between two different uh, contradictory segment, segment, and that is the reason it's not picking up the way it could. Okay, okay. No, no, that's, 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 that's interesting. And I think that's the reason, uh, I think the price point to me is also relatively high. And people think that if I have to pay 40, 50,000 to get a bicycle, why not add another 10K and get a motorcycle? Exactly. Okay. 
So the other question which I wanted to ask uh, is that uh, even in that EV segment, there's a lot of conversation on battery swapping. And you rightly mentioned initially that some two wheelers uh, uh, have this capacity. Yeah. So is, is and, again, and again, the question is, we have still not seen a massive uptake of vehicles with swapping facility. Uh, any reasons why, uh, maybe from your interaction with uh, the OEMs, why instead of swapping, uh, they are still going it overnight charging uh, for vehicles? I guess uh, the, the you know, jury is still out because you know some of them are pretty uh, excited about uh, swapping and some of them are you know they, they just want to get into their own stuff because I guess there's no uniformity and now we have that uniformity at least where everyone started understanding the you know the charging point uh, the the socket and the plug it should be uniform so that everyone can use all the uh, charging stations but at the same time uh, the side for that everyone has to come on the same page they have to work on similar dimensions similar specifications battery uh, and right now it is still at a very at a very uh, initial stage where all the manufacturers have finalized their products i guess so the moment that becomes mainstream that moment it uh, becomes uh, mass uh, market then they might work on uh, this model because uh, right now um, if i'm talking about my car if I have an electric car, if I go for swapping, I'm, I will not uh, trust that guy. Whether the, the battery which I'm getting is, you know, uh, in, you know, in good condition or not. It also because we don't have many uh, batteries running around. So after after a while, when it becomes mass, I think uh, we have to because that is, uh, I think that is one of the uh, one of the most you know, uh, important step if we want to do, if because uh, waiting to charge is something which is uh, forbidding all the customers from going for electric waiting. That is one of the biggest factors. So if we remove that factor, I think this will help the EV uh, ecosystem a lot. So I think the moment this becomes mass market, we might see some kind of consensus, but not, not right now. Interesting, no, no, that's absolutely. Uh, so right now, I mean, uh, we have been discussing uh, this whole issue of ice to EV. And I'm not sure you have seen it, but I have seen a lot more green number plates of late. So which, <laughs> which kind of encourages that, yes, the shift is happening. So on that uh, question, so one is that uh, there is an economic argument to EV and that you also highlighted. But a lot of vehicle procurement that happened is beyond economics, right? So why you buy a, let's say, 20 lakh car instead of 10 lakh car, there's no economic argument. So like what Tesla did is that it added some premium to its electric car. Do you think something like this should also happen in India, that there's a pride in people to own electric? And maybe that could also be a, a kind of catalyst for uh, higher adoption. That That is there. Because what I've seen is like, you know, uh, many customers who want to, uh, I mean, again, that is very interesting and contradictory because few of the customers, they wanted to buy electric vehicles. They asked me what kind of uh, products I can look at. And the moment I mentioned whether you can go for, uh, you know, Kona or ZS EV because they wanted something, you know, you know, 20 black plus. And first thing they mentioned that it doesn't look uh, that premium. It doesn't, uh, you know, feel, you know, the, the road presence is not there. So that, uh, you know, you want to make a statement also, but at, at the same time, you want to make the traditional statement also that I have a, you know, big, uh, bulky SUV, uh, which I'm, I'm driving now. Uh, yes, thankfully, uh, the green number plate has helped uh, the customers to register it easily. So they can, uh, I mean, it doesn't matter whether it's what you're signaling or they actually want to, uh, they, are, they are very, uh, this thing, are concerned with the environment, but I think that'll, that is helping uh, customers but uh, I also feel that the moment we have uh, more affordable products, uh, you know, that it has to go below 15 and uh, maybe uh, between 10 and 11. Because you know, if you if you look at last month's, I mean, th that's why I use the word psyche, uh, kitna deti psyche, which is uh, very uh, old and obsolete now. Last month, November, I think uh, your top 10 vehicles which we saw, uh, uh, top. 10 uh, selling vehicles, uh, uh, just two of them, I guess, Wagoner and Alto uh, were the products which were, you know, traditionally value for money, Paisa Vasool kind of segment. Otherwise, uh, three to four vehicles are SUVs, compact SUVs, whether it's uh, Creta, uh, Seltos, Nexon, Brezza, 
or you have MPs, MPVs like, uh, you know, uh, Artiga and I think Eco. So when you look at top sellers, customers are paying more money because they want more features and they are okay with spending if they're getting value out of it. So I think uh, they will go for that also. Uh, the moment we have some affordable products. So I, I don't, I'm not too sure whether premiumness or that exclusivity will help electrification because uh, that, because we still, uh, the density of in, you know cars per, uh, per per capita in India is still low. So in case we want to jump, we need we can't afford those customers to go via ICE and then land uh, on the uh, EV platform. So it's better if we start you know shifting them right uh, at the beginning on EV platform only. So that that might help. Uh, premiumness, I'm not too sure. Okay. So more affordable and, and if I could kind of quantify that affordability. Uh, so for car, you are saying something which is uh, about 10 lakhs or below yes. and for two wheeler around for 50, 60,000 or below, right? That's the range. Kind of, yes. Okay. No, that's interesting because right now I, I, I don't think we have any product uh, even in the two wheeler space and, and, and the four wheeler space within that range, right? No, I mean, few of them are there, but again, I don't remember the brand names uh, because oh, okay. we were traveling in Punjab and Rajasthan. I saw a few products which uh, I had to Google. I'm not too sure which brand was that, but some of them are there which are uh, cheaper. But uh, again, uh, for electric vehicles, I'm, my point is that it should be below, uh, you know, lakh 90. Uh, it should be below that because obviously electric vehicles customers who want, you know, you know the, the mental... Uh, piece of uh, you know traditional products they 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 are ready to pay a bit more but obviously not like 1.25 or 1.5 lakh that is uh, kind of steep okay so one question which i was thinking to ask you one is that very often people write to you message you reach out to you in terms of queries right so can you tell me more about this car this vehicle What's the typical query that you get when it comes to electric vehicle? What's the typical um, question that people would like to know uh, from you when it comes to electric? I guess uh, two questions I can think of is again, uh, the basic uh, A, the, uh, the range, and B, uh, custom, uh, uh, this thing, the charging network. That's it. I mean, whenever we talk about EVs, uh, they talk about uh, the range and charging network. Also, because uh, uh, this is what they hear, but at the same time, this is also the basic issue. So this is the most uh, basic question uh, related to EVs that uh, range anxiety is there and the charging network. So in case, um, because uh, the luxury car makers, they have they have their own uh, setup. They are they are building their own network. But in this segment, they will they know that they will they, the manufacturers will not provide them exclusive charging points. So they have to rely on other you know uh, network common common public network. So they so these two things. Uh, we generally discuss a to range kya hoga, and then where is the charging station or how, how to charge. Interesting, because I was thinking probably uh, your, the question will be the cost, but you are saying it's the range and... In, the, in yeah. my case, uh, most of the stories, we start with cost or you know, <laughs> we have those graphics and tickers, so they, they have the idea. Kitna, uh, kitna price hai, but at this, uh, but uh, in case they want to understand uh, and, you know, some in-depth so range and uh, the charging. I think this is very interesting because I think, uh, and it really kind of boils down to these two points that if you are really looking at accelerating the EV adoption, one is to address this question of range and which is also linked to probably charging infrastructure as well. So, and I think this is very uh, 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 interesting that unless, because one is we have created this set of public charging infrastructure, then you are really addressing this range question as well. Uh, because not, ev not everyone drives uh, for 200 kilometers a day, but there will be some times where you need to drive. And that's where the, uh, uh, the vehicle and the reliance on the vehicles come into. That in case I have to drive that extra 100 kilometers, exactly. do I have that infrastructure which can support? So, I mean, that's what I mentioned when we talk about state government. So, in case, you know, if, if state government is more, uh, you know, uh, excited or the intention is uh, more aggressive then what we can what we can see like for example you know there are certain uh, sectors or there are certain routes which are like very common so in, in those routes if you you provide for example if i want to 
uh, go to Chandigarh, I should, like, you know, uh, if I have an electric vehicle, I shouldn't be thinking about uh, this thing because that is very common route. So many people go or, or Delhi to Jaipur. So if Delhi, Haryana, uh, Rajasthan, these governments, they, they provide all these uh, small, small, and uh, just like old old school PCOs, if you, uh, that is a common, I mean, my favorite example. If, they, if we provide that kind of charging station, maybe I can stop for like half an hour and uh, then again stop after because we end up stop, stopping for chai and coffee anyway. So even if we like, you know, make multiple stops, it, it is as good as the uh, ICE engines. So I, I guess that that's what I meant when I, I thought if state governments could be more aggressive and more thoughtful, if they read it properly, that this is what is needed, I think it will be better for the whole adoption. Absolutely. And I think that's where you are also moving beyond just statement of intent, which is policy, to some tangible action on ground. Uh, so that it really gives the confidence to customers that uh, because I mean if you look at this uh, maybe if I have to drive from here to Chandigarh my car would not drive for 300 odd kilometers but then I know there is a petrol pump wherein I'll fill and so equivalent if I know there is a charging station where I can charge then absolutely there's no reason why I will not take my electric vehicle Thank you. and we like for 300 kilometers I mean common drivers I would say you know, at least three stops they will take. They stop for like 15, 20 minutes. Uh, you know, uh, so you can charge your vehicle uh, for that. So you don't have to wait for like full period. I don't know. I'm just, this is hypothetical, but I also feel that this gives confidence. Absolutely. And I think a lot of times uh, 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 these decisions are driven by perception rather than these pure economics. Uh, which we often keep hearing that the total cost of ownership of electric vehicle is low, so people should adopt. But I think people are looking at beyond just economics and that confidence in the vehicle. Okay, so this is great talking to you, Kranti. So before I end, one last question is that, so if you, uh, so let's say, if you would like to answer how, uh, so when you get these queries on what vehicles to buy, what would be the percentage of electric vehicle queries versus the conventional? Uh, the query is higher. So I, I assume that they're not, uh typical buyers, but the query is higher, maybe 20 to 80, I would say. So they have started talking about it. The awareness is obviously high. The curiosity is high. So they want to understand, you know, the charging, obviously beyond uh, so many enthusiasts, they just, they just, it's not only about range and uh, charging network. They want to understand the, you know, kilowatt hour, uh, you know, this thing, uh, mechanism, the calculation, how do you calculate it? What kind of charging uh, ports are there? And uh, if we want to compare, because most of the, uh, you know, uh, the stories which we have done right now are those expensive, uh, other than these two or three products, most of them are expensive. So they want to understand the, you know, uh, the balance between performance and electric, whether it ha it is better. Uh, so in those enthusiasts, really, they want to understand whether that instantaneous torque is exciting enough. Is it making, uh, for for example, you know, all these uh, uh, big performance car makers, they are also in uh, uh, electric field. I mean, uh, for example, Audi, they have already launched their uh, three products, uh, e-tron and then Merck is there, even Porsche Taycan is there. So so these performance oriented products, when they, they are electrified, is enthusiasts uh, ask a lot of questions. Uh, Interesting. Now, as these questions are coming, I think this whole conversation is also shifting from policy to actual uh, end user. So m one last question is that, let's say one What's your outlook of EV, let's say, in next five years? Do you think in the two-wheeler space in next five years, we will see more electric vehicle registration, registration at least in big, cent big cities? Uh, that's one. And second, uh, what are one or two most important things that can be done to kind of facilitate this transition? I guess uh, with, uh, one is obviously, uh, I mean, the first answer, your first question is obviously I'm more optimistic. I think Indian customers are that way is very rational and very brutal. So I get, I understand that uh, in, a, in, in coming one or two years, more and more customers are looking at, are they going to look at the electric vehicles? I, I don't have any doubt. Uh, then uh, if you talk about few changes, I feel that uh, you know as a you know all the market leaders both electric both two wheelers and uh, four wheelers they need to be more aggressive 
I think they have to trust Indian customers more than they are trusting. And I think Indian customers are ready uh, for affordable uh, electric vehicles. They will adopt uh, in the, they, the EV adoption rate, I, I feel, would be much higher than uh, global rate if we have decent affordable products because uh, they, 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 they make sense and they are more practical. So uh, A, uh, the governments, they have to uh, you know, make, un, uh, you know, uh, they have to start thinking about the charging infrastructure and, and few uh, proper actions uh, uh, so that uh, customers can see those changes. For example, if you see in Delhi, Noida, or Gurgaon, those charging stations, somehow, even if I don't own electric vehicle, I have some kind of messaging going on, okay, uh, the, the ecosystem is growing. So that kind of setup has to be there where you know customers can come and uh, as their vehicles and uh, B, they all of them have to come on uh, you know, one you know so they have to get some kind of con consensus so they work uh, so that the coverage of charging network is throughout the country. I think these two three things are which I'm uh, hoping because uh, what we know of uh, most of the manufacturers they have lined up uh, their EVs and I guess in two to three years we'll see uh, you know some real action in uh, electric vehicles. Thanks a lot, Khan. This is fantastic. I mean, my biggest takeaway from this conversation was that one, the customer, the Indian customer is ready to embrace electric vehicle. That's one. What we need is two things. One, a cohesive policy and some tangible action on the ground, which is creation of public charging infrastructure. And if we are able to do it, uh, as you rightly said, uh, and I also believe that the adoption of electric mobility in India will be much faster than anywhere else in the world. So folks, with this, we'll come to end of this fireside chat with Kranti Sambhav. Great talking to you. Thanks a lot, Kranti.